this way or flatten the faces or just make this square. If you can tell me that, I can do it. <laughs> Whilst you're doing that, I'll fill me glue pot up. Oh, that's another job I've got to do. Oh. My hide glue's nearly all gone. So, I've got to fill up my hide glue. And I know some of you have seen this before, but I love doing this. This is how I buy hide glue. 25 kilo bags. I'll just mix another batch up here, getting ready to go. And there, this is my party trick. I love this. I know a lot of you have seen it before, but I, I like doing it anyway. To fill my bottle up so I can pour it without it going all over the place. Oh, hang on, what's happened to chat? Chat's gone. That's interesting, never heard that happen before. Let me see. Chat's just told me it doesn't want to work. Um, wait a minute, let me. Am I still live? According to that, I am. According to that, I'm still live. Okay. Let me get chat out and we'll try again. That's interesting, I've never had. Yeah, oh, that's good. I'm back, I didn't go anywhere. Okay, we're back, Jacob, same here, all right. I'm back. Oh. And what I'm doing, I'm just, I'm waiting for Jacob. Jacob, if you can tell me how you want that square. Do you want it squared that way or on the faces or make it square all the way around? If you can tell me that, I can do it. Well, I can try and do it. Hey, Eric, how are you? Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, we are, thank goodness. Oh, okay. Um, oh, let me just do this first. Oh. So this is how I fill up my glue jar and then put another pourer on the top. That's it. How easy is that? And then... Bring it in here. We'll get a heat gun. Okay, Jacob, gotcha. And there you are.
Oh. Put the cap back on. I've got a bottle I can pour it. Isn't that the coolest thing? Well, I think it is anyway. All right, let's see if we can get this. I was looking for a number four, but um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, we'll try this one. I really don't know if it's sharp, but we'll give it a go. Okay. So... That's a bit small. Let's get a bigger bit. I've got anything bigger over here. Oh dear. Hang on, I'll go and get a bigger bit. Chat amongst yourselves. All right, now that's already square, so what I'll do, I'll just go over and cut it on the bandsaw, so it's a bit wonky, then we can square it up, how about that? Uh, yeah, it all went weird, didn't it? Um, okay, we'll do that. We'll just go over to the bandsaw. All right. So I've cut this here, so we put a square on it. You'll see I'm not, I'm sure we'll, put a, we'll put a big square on it. There we go. You'll see this definitely is not square. Hang on, wrong camera, you twit. See the gap through it, so it's not square. And what we'll do, we'll square it up the ends. The ends aren't dead square either. You can see light there. So what we'll do, we'll make it square and parallel just for Jacob. Could use that one again. 
as you can tell, this, <laughs> this plane has not been used for a long while, and there's no guarantees it's sharp either. But we'll give it a we'll give it a go. Let me just put all this stuff back on. Yeah, I wonder how long I was talking to myself for. A bit ordinary. First thing you've got to learn when planing, doesn't matter what plane you're using or what timber you're using, you have to know how to read grain. If you can't read the grain, you're going to be in all sorts of trouble. So let's look at this one here and get a pencil. And I just realised I need a drink of water. Oh dear. Here we go. Oh, that's nice. Okay, if you look at the grain, I'm just trying to, yeah, okay. You can see the grain is actually going that way. That's the way you want to plane. If you go this way, your cutter is going to tear stuff out, whereas this way is going to peel it off. End grain's the same, but we'll come to that later. So first of all, we've got to find out a straight line. Now this is the line I just cut there, which is very, very ordinary. So where did that big square go? We'll make an imaginary, well we won't make an imaginary, we'll draw a line along here. And then we'll put this square on that line. It's really helpful if you've got proper light that I don't have. There you go. Now, I will use a knife. You could use a pencil. But I'll use a knife down there, then I'll put a pencil into it. So you can see it. That's going to be our straight edge along there. Once we've got that, then we parallel this edge to that, and then we do the end grain to this. So now I've drawn that, the grain is running that way, so I'm going to put it in the vise this way, because I'm left-handed. Um, and let's get the practices going. Good. Put water in the vise. I'll show you the, this is the difference. Okay, this This is the timber in the vise without water. Okay, have a look at, that's the position of the handle. See that? Now I'll undo that one turn. Take that out. Ordinary water, nothing special, nothing fancy. You squirt the water into the vise.
All right, we're back on air now. Is it happening? Let me let me check with one. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, that was that was my mate Frank, another woodworker from Sunshine Coast, just rang me up to tell me that there was no noise coming out. Oh, hang on, let me see how this other one's. I'll just put new batteries in. Tell you what, these drain drain batteries pretty quick. Let me see how this one's going. No, that's still all right. So there you go. Well, I didn't talk as much. My batteries had worked longer. Uh, mm. Oh, thank you, Frank. <laughs> You're a lifesaver. I don't know how long it was. But <laughs> Thanks, Eric. I'll put that one up, yeah. I've got to, I've got to check them. See, I get so focused on what I'm... Jacob, I was telling you all the good stuff. Uh, but there should be maybe one more pull on that. And there we go. We're just a little bit in the middle, maybe. There you go. So that's down to that line. Now what we've got to do is square off these ends. To do that, now we've got a known flat surface. We can put, oops. Oh dear, oh dear. We can put a line down there and we'll plane to that line. Uh, and normally I would use a, a block plane for this, not a number four, but things are what they are. To stop breaking out on this end, if you take a little chamfer off there like that, you won't get the break out. Now I think I'm going the wrong way there because I'm getting tear out on the end grain, so I'm going to turn that around. And I'll put a chamfer on this side again, so we don't get tear out. That's better. When you do an end grain too, um, do it, don't do it straight down like that. Do it on a skew angle. That'll give you a much better cut. And I've just, <laughs> I didn't realise that. I just realised this, this is actually two boards joined together. So there we go. And that is now square with that. That is now square with that. And we just got this end to do now. Put the knife mark down there. So I've got, now I've got to take from this portion here down to nothing. off the end so I don't split out. And I think you'll find that is pretty darn square there. We'll go that way. Let's square that way too. There you go, Jacob. I hope that helped. Did it help? Are you still with me? 
Oh, dear idea. Ah, oh, let me go there. <laughs> I was saying some gems there, Debaka. I was. I was. I was. I even impressed myself with the depth of wisdom to which I plunged. Anyway, that happens. If anyone wants a full recording of it, let me know because I've got it on the computer. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Uh, where are we at this? I'm going to have to... Hey, Wes, how you going, mate? How's it working? Is it working well for you? I like the pictures you're putting up. Good on you, mate. And God bless you too. Thanks for your support. Oh, that's good, Jacob. I'm, I'm sorry you didn't have the sound there, but um, I don't know if you missed the bit. When I said the reason I don't use a number four is because they're not as accurate as um, other planes. If you can get another plane, see if you can get a five and a half. They're a pretty good uh, intermediate plane that you can do a bit of everything with. Here we go for time. I'll, I'll just start cutting a couple of these out. And then um, what was the go? Oh, mate, that was a... Isn't that a ripper? It's a, um, oh, it's just an ordinary marking gauge, only for wide boards. I picked it up at an auction for about $15. It is an absolute perler. And obviously someone's made it. It's got a little cam lock there to lock it in place. I would say it was easily 1920s. It's made out of Silky Oak, even the Dow Silky Oak. And at the same auction, I picked up these beautiful Tremel points, which again were handmade. So, yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous stuff. Gorgeous. Now, these I <coughs> veneered up last night. And it, it's interesting to me how things evolve. Because when I started doing them, I was doing, as you know, those of you that were watching, I was doing um, both veneers at once. But what I found was the challenge of that, getting them into the press, they had to be exactly on top of each other or else you'd have uneven pressure. And with the burl that I was using, which is, 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 is. I'm having a good day of losing stuff, I'll tell you. Oh, behind me, there you go. Which are these, because I want them to be all the same, so these are all in line. They're not square, and it was very hard to line up these in the press. By the way, for new people, this is what these are going to end up being. They're uh, to go inside, there you go, all those boxes behind me. So it's a timber frame, been veneer both sides, flocked. That um, orangey stuff you see there is what they call flock. It's a rayon, diced rayon. And then Susie's embroidering this, which will be hot glued to the back. And then put in the lids like that. So I've got 12 of those to do and that's what these are. So I thought I might as well cut these out and do them one veneer at a time and oh gee whiz I tell you what it's so much easier and if anyone's got any job for any veneer hearts let me know. <laughs> I'm going to have a few of them. Uh, but I'm thinking tomorrow, 
Uh, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow we can finish off that end grain chopping board and do some more chair repairs. I'll start working on one of the other chairs. I, I've got, um, yeah, more box making to do. I've got solid edging to put on those box, at least one of the boxes behind me. I'll show you in a tick. There you go, look at that. Um, yeah, this one's got to have the solid edging put on like that one. Let's go there. So that's got solid edging on it and that one hasn't, so that one's got to get it on there. And then I'll have to do a lot of hand planing because a lot of it has to be hand planed before I can go on a profile cutter. Then we, not tomorrow, yeah, not tomorrow, but then eventually we'll cut the lids off and, where are we? And I've got, hello, Bob. Nothing to eat. Oh, you're going to go? Look at the sadness. Oh, no, every, every time I go to put the camera at him, he just he goes, no, you don't pay me enough. Um, I've got to line them with cedar, so I've got to make the lining boards up. And what else? Um, yeah, then we've got to veneer the inside edges, which I've just got to go to my veneer shop and see if I can find the same veneer that I used on that one. I'm pretty sure I've got some left. Um, and then, of course, there's fitting hinges. Then there's... Uh, finishing them. I'll tell you what we will do. I'll, I'll just finish this one and then we will glue. No, we won't. We'll do that one tomorrow because we, we got heaps of time. As I said, we'll glue that seven sided box, but I still want to get a couple of extra coats of um, shellac on that before I glue it with. I want it polished on the inside, so we'll do that. And oh, who knows what else is going <laughs> to come over the fence or be left at the front gate for me. I don't know. But this is fun. Susie's wrapped because she's getting so much these jobs that I promised her I'd <laughs> get them finished. So oh, that's what we'll do too. We'll cut up the frame and we'll actually make the frame out of the moulding that we did the last couple of days. Um, I'm, whoops, I'm going to try and see. I should, yeah, I should learn, you know, not talk and use sharp things. Um, I've got to see if I can get a sheet of 2 mil glass. I've got a pallet load of it in the shed. But if you are with us earlier... You would tell from Susie's expression that it's very well hidden. So I've got to go and try and find that. I'll see if I can find the PV, uh, PVC glue and we can start making the pressure pot so I can start ebonising some chopping boards with that ebonising solution that we made up. Um, look, there's... there's there's always stuff to do around this place, I'll tell you. Let me do this and then I'll have a chat. There we go. All right. Ah. Let's see how far I go. Um, I, uh, I had to come in. I had to come in back in the fashion. Oh, good. That's it. Where's panel gauge? Yeah, I'm going to invest in more hand play. Good on you, Jacob. Mate, get second-hand ones. Get good second-hand ones. That one I was using then, this one, that's about a 1970 vintage. And it's still pretty ordinary compared to the much older planes. And nowadays, I don't think that the cheaper planes, they'll, they'll do a job, but they just don't hold their mark. So here's a question, okay, Debaka, here's a question. How good is Silky Oak to work with? We had a few of them bought up here. These, it really depends. Um, 
There's two types in, in, well, there's a lot, but the two main types in Australia are, oh, God, I've got to think of it. Um, Cardwellia sublimus, which is northern silky, which has a really, really nice fleck in it. And there's southern silky, which is Grevillea uh, plain and ordinariness. No, Grevillea something or other. Oh, hang on, I'm just having a look out here. If I can find the two. Oh. Oh, what's that? Ah. Uh, uh, hang on, let me just, if you, if you hear a scream, I've just fallen off me jointer. Whoop. Luckily, it's a long bed jointer. Oh, whoops, I just ripped that, okay. There you go. Yeah, I think one's called Grevillea. Now, hang on. Grevillea Cardwillea, I think. That's Southern Silky. And then, actually, that's a good half and half, that one. And um, there's Sublimus, which is the Northern one. That's Northern Silky. You can see it's got a really nice medullary in it. And it's got good colour. That camera's not really showing the colour that well. Whereas this one over here, uh, there, that stuff there, that's actually southern silky. It's not northern silky. And the side of it is prickly ash, which is like another silky. And uh, it's got a really nice crimson fleck all the way through it. So what's it like to work with? Oh... Oh, look, it's better than pine. It, uh, it's very dusty, very flaky. You can make a lot of things out of it. Uh, you can make chairs and tables. I've done a lot of church cathedral work using silky oak, in um, particularly one cathedral. All their stuff was silky oak. Uh, it's like They used to call it the poor man's cedar. So if you couldn't afford cedar furniture, you used to get silky oak furniture. Very big in the... Um, you know, 19, early 1900s, up to the First World War, uh, possibly into the 1920s, and then Art Deco came out, which then, in Australia anyway, went into veneers, and in the most part that was Queensland walnut and Queensland maple. So, look, if you've got some, use it. It's all you can do. Use it. It's good. Better than pine. <laughs> Um, did that answer your question, Tobacco? I hope so. It is, look, it is greatly sought after, yes. But it depends if it's the dark Mandalory Ray or the light one. Uh, she'll be coming down every day, mate. That's more than 12 times. <laughs> Back again, hang on, who's back again? Oh, back again, connected to the See, James? Oh, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> that was back when I was just cutting things, wasn't it? Oh, that's good. It's an old, old number for Jacob. No, Casuarina. Um, is Silky Oak a Casuarina? No, no, it's a Grevillea. Casuarinas, um, we've got uh, She Oak, uh, Bull Oak, um, Hairy Oak. They're Casuarinas. But you'll find that, um, yeah, silkies are whatever I said they were, grevilleas. Now, she oak, she oak's different to silky oak. You have a look. I've got, I have got some here, but 
Um, actually, I've got some bullock here, which is a bit different. It still has fleck in it. Actually, I'll go, wait a minute, I'll go and get some. There you go. Bum ba dum bum. Ah. Oh, look at that. Sitting there. Sitting there would have tripped over it. I went out, I've got next to my pile of blue gum that I make charcoal for blacksmithing. I've got a silky oak, not a silky oak, a she oak. So and I picked a piece up and they had all these black ants and they attacked me. But that's where are we? Yeah, that's she oak. There's the medullaries on the side. That's she oak there. I'll see if I can cut a bit without damaging myself on the bandsaw. And we'll have a look. Oh. Quite pretty, actually. Okay, that's she oak, but it does have this very strong fleck in it. It depends if it's quarter sawn or not. Uh, this is only a, a limb, so it hasn't got much in it, but yeah, the silky's a lot lighter as well, a lot softer. Ugh. The ants, I'll tell you. Ah. Oh. I finally found Specky. Hey, Gravilia robusta, that's the one I'm thinking. The other one's Sublimus. Robusta is Southern Silky. Um, silky Oak looks nothing like American Oak. No, I've got American Oak over there too. That's, oh, he, he's a bit of American Oak. Oh. There you go. Oh. That's a bit of, oh, American oak, we call that in Australia, but I believe you call it white oak in, um, in America. But, yeah, it's lovely. It's good stuff. Don't ask me for any more timbers. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I've got timber I don't know I've got. It's good. Ah, oh, dear. Oh, look, I reckon it's a weed tree. Over here, camphor laurel they class as a weed tree as well. <laughs> uh, well, actually, the definition, as I said yesterday, I did a landscaping course, well, about three days of it. Um, and the weed is anything 
that grows where it wasn't planted. That's the definition of a weed. So if you've got a veggie patch with a prize-winning rose growing in it, the rose is, rose is a weed unless you put it there. Yeah, again, <laughs> I could, I could run out and get you some banks here, but um, yeah, I have. It's beautiful to turn, and again, it looks very much like a, a grevillea. Well, it is a grevillea, I suppose. I actually have a, a small silky oak, southern silky oak tree growing just the other side of the shed. That No, I didn't put there, so it's a weed. And I've got this really interesting one. I had some pallets of um, pavers. And this, I'll bring it in tomorrow. And it actually grew inside the pallet, out and up the side. So this, it goes, I'll tell you what, we'll bring it in tomorrow and I'll cut it on the band so we'll see what sort of interesting grain it's got. And then I, I know a lady that could make a lovely spoon out of that. <coughs> Steve, have you, yeah, I've done that. Have you got a metre length of iron bark to show us? Um... Just trying to think. I would have. What do you want? Red iron bark or grey iron bark? Because I've got some red iron bark, but I haven't got any grey iron bark. <laughs> no, I only knew pine and mirandi when I started out, Max. Uh, oh, I should really take stock of what I've got in the shed. I know, and I, I know I've got, actually I might even have grey iron bark and veneer, I don't know. Anyway, whatever is the wild the time is so we can see how much you can get. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just for Jeff, this is an iron bark. Yeah, this is blue gum. Hang on, wait a minute. Fix you. <laughs> All right. Oh. Where are we? Where did we fade at? Well, that's. I just shot. Got, got ants on me now. That's some blue gum blocks that I've got. They're about two foot across. That's for turning into charcoal. And just for you, Jeff, as I came in the door, it's covered in ants. There's a bit of red iron bark for you. <laughs> oh, they got wings on them. Hang on, let me get it. <laughs> let me get it out. Oh. Oh. Puh. Horrid things. You've started something now. So I had this brilliant idea last time I was out west of making iron bark chopping boards. Yeah, that's one there. And when I started putting it through the drum sander, I quickly thought, no, that's a stupid idea. I'm not going to do it. So there you go. Happy? <laughs> Oh dear. Uh. Uh. 
Yeah, go and collect it if you can. Oh, yuck. All right, well, that's it. Oh, my body's telling me I've been doing this for too long. So anyway, what did we do today? We got into that chopping board. Ah, so this will finish off tomorrow. And don't forget, if it doesn't rattle, it's not real. Um, we'll finish that one off, put the routed edges around it and oil it. It'll look schmick. We did that for Jacob, how to square something up. Uh, started fixing up a chair that was come from together. Cut these out. Um, I'm sure we did some other stuff. Oh, that's right, the, the picture frame. So more to do tomorrow. So that's it. Make a date tomorrow morning, 9.30 Australian Queensland time and I'll be here. Thank you everyone for joining in. It's been a blast and a hoot as usual and I really think there is a great community happening in that chat room and I thank the moderators who haven't had to do anything because everyone's been really good and behaved themselves, so thank you. New people that come in for the first time, you're more than welcome to join in. If you've got any questions like Jacob, he wanted to know how to square a bit of timber using a number four, ask me and I'm happy to, if I'm capable of doing it, I'm happy to uh, oblige. And if I'm not capable of doing it, I'll still give it a good go and everyone can have a good laugh. So there you go. This is Steve from the Shed Door Down saying remember to keep it sharp. More importantly, keep it safe. Keep your distance. Be kind to, your, and be kind to yourself as well as each other. And I look forward to your company tomorrow morning or evening or afternoon or in the middle of the night, whatever suits you. Uh, in the workshop and we'll get some more work done. Till then, look after yourself. May your God bless you, look after you and make the right decisions. Bye for now.